Hi everyone, my name is Sharon Kuifman and I'm obsessed with remote work. That's right, I've been working remote for 20 years, I built three companies, I distributed teams, hardware, products, all those things just sitting in front of my computer. Today I run a company called Distant Job, which interestingly enough is a recruitment agency that specializes in remote employees. And I'm here because I wrote this hopefully a book that you would love called Surviving Remote Work, where I take all my experience and all my knowledge and teach people how to be better remote managers and how to be better remote workers. Now, considering that I only have 15 to 20 minutes, I would like to skip to the most important components where it comes to be a successful remote employee. The two components are productivity and mental health. So let's sink into productivity. There's this book that I really love that is often studied in MBA programs across the world. It's called The Goal. It's actually the only business book that I've ever read that was written as a fiction story. It's really fun. I was actually inspired by that book because I also wanted to write a business management book that is fun to read. So in this book, this is a guy named Alex Rogo that is managing a factory and he's not doing too well. And he does not seem to understand why, because he's holding such a great job, keeping everybody busy. He calls it in the book, Efficiencies. He learns throughout his adventures that the only thing that matter is the amount of product that comes out of the factory, which the book calls throughput. And the way that he solves it is by figuring out all the bottlenecks in the factory. So just imagine you have this factory, 12 different stations, you have components that you need to cut, you need to mold, you need to fold, you need to galvanize. And one of the machines is actually working at quarter of the speed. It, it is really slow. And this Alex Rogo made a decision to bring in another machine to fix the, the second station that is a bottleneck, bring some more resource, and guess what? He's producing four times as much products and making tons of money. I love this book because it truly defines what matter. The goal is to produce and it's never been more relevant till now that you have people working remotely. When you think about a physical office, you get paid to come in on time, sit on your ass, type in on your computer or spend time having meetings or talking a lot. You'll be judged about on your ability to stay busy or, you know, as that book call, is calling it, efficiencies. And many managers are probably hoping that this will translate to productivity. But it doesn't. Research shows that an average employee that works in an eight-hour shift only produces two hours and 53 minutes. I'm not exaggerating, they did a study with 2,000 full-time people in vouchercloud.com, so you go and check it out. And you know, if you ever hang out with those corporate types or successful entrepreneurs, often they will tell you that they're working 12 hours a day and they sleep like five hours and they have barely any time for lunch unless it's, there's a lunch meeting. You know, you can't mess with a lunch meeting. Lunch meeting is hard work. These guys are always very intimidating, but most of them are not honest. You shouldn't believe them. I most certainly don't because I used to tell the same stories. And yes, I sat in an office for 12 hours a day. I was an early riser or as I like to call now sleep depriver <laughs> and I looked so busy, but I was not producing. My throughput was crap. In my first company, it, it was like this all the time. It was a 24-7 a service, and I was available for anyone who, was need, who needed me. So I looked good, and this is some of how those work horses often stay busy. They create an environment where they're in continuous need and they keep their brain running on adrenaline mode, but once they need to sit down and produce something tangible, their brain is depleted. 
And I'm sure there are a few people that have some kind of magic power of working 12 hours of focused work, but they're really rare then and they're quite overrated sometimes. Now in a physical office, you're surrounded by other people that are working. At least you have an area that is built for work and any educated manager would hope that if sit people in those closed boxes we call office and let them do something, they will produce that average of two hours and 53 minutes that we were talking about. But when you go home, this is no longer the case. You can't pull up this, hey, look at me, I'm sitting in the office, I'm looking at the screen, I'm typing on the keyboard, I'm coming on time. This opportunity does not exist anymore. No one is watching you. It's like when you know when you move from high school to university, I don't know if you guys remember it, but suddenly you have unlimited opportunity to do nothing. So if you don't want to produce, you can go an entire day without doing much. So anyone that is remote or thinking about going remote, I hope that you all agree that it is about productivity. So now, the more important question. How do we maximize productivity? First of all, eliminate all distractions. Actually, the bottleneck that we discussed before in the book in the remote world is actually distractions. This is what keeps you from moving forward. There is a, another important stat that shows that when you get distracted, it takes an average 25 minutes to get back to productive work. So to do this well, you need as many hours of undistracted work don't let people keep on coming back and forth. Your husband or your wife can't ask you where is their pants during your work time. If you have kids, do have seats with your partner and make sure that your, that your time is completely undistracted. We already established that most people average two hours and 53 minutes. If you rock four hours of work, you're kicking ass. If your distraction is social media or games, install those app blockers. They're really useful. And, and I know that you can hack them. I know that it's easy to install, but the, the small amount of time that it takes to, to hack or remove them is the time that your brain needs to say, hey, whoa, 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 I, I need to actually produce. Now, another important advice about, um, about productivity. Make a separation. Don't work from your bed. Don't work from your sofa. Create yourself the coolest working station you can find. You know, the one that you wouldn't be comfortable having in a physical office or in front of other people. Get some tchotchkes, get some cool posters, have fun. If you can afford it, get a stand-up table, get awesome speakers, coolest chairs, or even a beer fridge. Feel awesome in your working station and keep it for work. And for crying out loud, get dressed. Don't work in your pajamas. Until you're not dressed or you're not in your working station, you should not count this as work. And I know it's kind of funny because your bed or your closet um, can be very close to your working station. So it's literally hop in, hop out. Hop in, hop out. But that hop in and hop out is your hop into work. I'm getting out of work. I know, you, smaller areas means work is closer to you. Isn't that great? You don't need to drive to work, you don't need to stay in traffic, but keep the separation. And keep in mind that when you're working, you need to evaluate and track your productivity because that's what matters. Not how much you sit or you look at your screen and and remember you don't have you don't have to spend too many hours as long as you make those hours cost count now we're getting to mental health when you are not paying attention to mental health or even if you neglect your health in general you're not succeeding 
you are continuously in survival mode, even if you don't notice it. So if you figure out to kick ass for a while, but you're losing sleep, you're not paying attention to how well you're doing, you're not doing exercise, you're not hanging out with your family and friends, what you're doing is surviving on adrenaline. It's interesting thing with adrenaline that, that they did some research on sleeping babies. Uh, for any parents out there, we know that sleep is crucial for kids' health. The growth, their learning abilities, their, their capacity to be active. The sleep expectancy of a two-year-old is about a two-hour nap and 10 to 12 hours of sleep at night. And most parents these days, their goal is to get their baby to sleep at night between seven to eight. Oh, please. Oh, sometimes, it, sometimes it's a dream. But back in the days when kids did not fall asleep on time, the parents tried to cut out the nap, hoping they will uh, be more tired at night. But what we've learned in the past decade or so, and what I've learned in this horrible, horrible COVID period, the cutting the nap makes the kids go to sleep later and makes them wake up more at night because the adrenaline that they have in their system that keeps them awake prevents them from functioning better at night. So you not only you cut out the nap, which is a few hours, you, you get the kids to be later. It's a complete failure. And it will, and when you make a choice to use your adrenaline during the day, you need to let your body heal. But if you're not letting your body heal and you're and you're continuously in adrenaline mode for many, for many weeks, many months, many, many, many years, what you're doing is creating damage. It will create depression, burnout, and low motivation, which again comes back to productivity. Sorry. Say it five times fast. So why is mental health so important? First, because productivity is nothing without longevity. That's right, work is not a sprint, it's a marathon. And taking care of mental health is the best way to reach a long and successful career. You can't just think about how to be productive today. You actually need to invest in consistent production every day. And that comes with making sure that you are at your most optimal mental health. And it's never more important than it is with remote work. When you're in office space, there's a certain cross check. There is so long that you can get away without showering, showering, putting deodorant, or putting on a fresh new clothes. Your colleagues will notice that you stink. Ugh. And hopefully, they're worried about you. In a remote world, people can disappear to a very dark place without anyone noticing. Now, I should have started this talk as the two most important components Productivity and longevity, it even rhymes. It, it sounds so much better, but, but I made a choice to focus on mental health and I always do because there is something to say about enjoying your career in life. Science shows that good sleep, eat healthy, work out, have capa capacity to properly disconnect and enjoy life will help you think better, give you more energy, help you to be more disciplined, will keep you more alert, and all this gives you the ability to produce more. Also, it will improve the willpower. And willpower is, is, is a really funny thing. I don't know if it ever happened to you that you had a beautiful dinner with your family, you finished with a nice piece of cake, you eat it, mm, so good. Suddenly, you decide to hang out where your parents or your wife or your kids go to sleep and you crave another piece of cake. And then another one. And, not, and then another one. And then another one. And no more cake. I, I'm right now talking to a camera. I'm hoping that I'm not the only person that this happened at least a hundred times. And if I am, ugh, sorry. <laughs> but, but what really is disturbing that your partner or your parents or your kid wake up in the morning, open up the fridge and it's like, 
Dude, what's wrong with you? Don't you have any willpower? Well, apparently, willpower is an actual thing that you can have limited supply of. It is a form of a battery in your body that every time you need to think about not grabbing that cake, skipping that smoke, finishing your homework, or that project, the battery gets depleted. So how do we make this battery more powerful? You sleep better, you eat better. If you're an extrovert, you socialize more. Actually, as a remote extrovert, you should be booking, booking your social events like you would book meetings. If you're an introvert, you'll find a beautiful force to hang out or anything that inspires you. Apparently, carbohydrates increase willpower, which is tough for all you low carb people out there. And of course, stop guilting yourself when your battery is half charge and you had half the cake or the full cake because the guilt trip actually depletes the willpower and makes you repeat these bad habits. This is all that comes with mental health. Now, what does this have to do with you guys? I'm in book fest for crying out loud. Why am I blubbering about remote employees? Of course, I want to tell you what my book is about, but there is a bigger message. Sitting in front of a computer and writing text all day or half a day if you do it part time is with no doubt the ultimate remote job. It is the job that requires you to sit down and produce written pages, hopefully good written pages and doing it day in and day out. You are the people that truly can get away with not changing your clothes, not taking a shower, not even get out of the bed. Just to be clear, by the way, if you actually get excited about fresh underwear day, that's not good. And while you probably understand that producing quality pages every day is key to your success, some of you might not understand that sitting in front of your computer for longer hours might actually not produce more. I hope that you learning guilt tripping yourself for not writing one day might actually reduce willpower and bring you faster to a stage of writer's block. I hope you're learning that to write more content, you must get yourself in a non-distracted work, working environment in a separate working station and focus on leading a healthy life because Thinking better with more energy and enjoying life will help you to write better and faster. And just like that corporate dude who always brags about producing 12 hours and potentially succeeding in it, there's also a bunch of artists and writers that tell you they do drugs, they do alcohol, who are totally depressed and create masterpieces. They create brilliant work. But those are the exceptional cases. And many of them did not live long to see the influence that they created, or at least did not have time to enjoy, to enjoy it. As a writer, you took on the challenge of being the ultimate remote worker. And to succeed in it, you must eliminate all misconceptions out there. Now that the world is starting to really legitimize and understand remote work, it is your opportunity to thrive and not just to survive. Thank you so much.